Hello, everyone. This is Chris Frederick from the Stretch to Win Institute, and I'm here and very excited to be with two of my graduates, uh, newly graduate at a new higher advanced level, level three. We have Paige and we have Chris. Welcome to the YouTube channel and whoever else sees this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start. Hey, with, yeah, say hello. Thank so you. I'm going to start with you, Paige. Um, why don't you introduce yourself to the listeners, uh, your name, your whole name and your practice, uh, where are you from? Okay, so I'm Paige Tonages. I practice out of the Palm Springs area. I just expanded my business out to Carlsbad and Oceanside as well. Um, and I'm the owner of Humorous Inc. Relaxation and Recovery Therapies. Very nice. I'd like to just start with a little brief history or uh, story about your journey. Mm -hmm. What you did before you came to see us at level one and a bit about your journey through the levels up to the last training you had recently okay so i i had a background in law enforcement i was a police officer for just under four years um and when i came to level one i was still working as a police officer and did both simultaneously level two is when i had just left the force but i had incorporated a lot of self-regulation techniques alongside of the fascial stretch therapy techniques to help specifically with a lot of my guys and gals that suffer from PTSD. Wow. So, and is that what your focus is, is uh, in terms of your clientele? Um, predominantly, yes. I work with a lot of firefighters, dispatchers, and police officers. I really considered them always the heroes, and especially during the pandemic, Mm -hmm. Even more so, just going out there during that very um, confusing and chaotic time period. And we're still dealing with the outcome of that, the post-COVID, but still kind of present COVID uh, situation. Uh, so I really have to commend you for helping these, these fine people who really need I had my share working with them as well. Awesome. And, and we all kind of need it, but if anyone needs it, they need it. Yes, very much so, especially sleeping. Sleeping is the biggest issue and being able to downregulate someone's nervous system and their body and give them even an hour of relaxation time uh, has been an incredible thing to give back to all of them. So can you speak a little bit more about that? You're saying that the work you you do just fascial, uh, Frederick, we now call it Frederick stretch therapy, formerly fascial stretch therapy, FSD. Yes. Um, do you do anything else with it or is that pretty much what you do? Nope, that's pretty much what I do, just the Frederick stretch technique. Um, okay. that's, that's my whole practice for the most part. And then I just incorporate some other things. And so how does that help sleep? I mean, is that something you tell your clients or is that something they report back to you or? Um, a lot of the times they report back to me. I mean, I've even had my firefighters, their wives will text me. Um, when they go home, they're not waking up to alarm tones that aren't there. You know, they go home completely downregulated, relaxed, whereas before they might have been irritable or just ex overly exhausted where they're not sleeping. And normally I'll stretch them before their first day off and they go home and go to sleep and their wives are super happy because they get their person back the next day, you know. Um, and same thing, even when they're on duty, I'll go to the firehouses. I go to about six firehouses regularly in the Palm Springs area. And right now, um, Cal Fire, uh, the guys are working a tremendous amount, almost like 22 days in a row. So sometimes they're only going home for one day. So I make it a point to go out there and just do everything that I can for them to just give them that hour of peace between calls for sure. Yeah, out here, Southwest, probably near you too, it's wildfire season. And those people, men and women who battle those wild, I can't imagine anything more just, I don't know, frightening. Mm -hmm. um, and they go out there and do it for us, uh, totally. the people live in those areas. That's, it's incredible what they do. So they really need our services. So, so sleeping is healing, right? I mean, sleep is now medicine. There's a sleep medicine category now. Absolutely. Many people have heard about it. So to give someone sleep, that's where it all starts mm -hmm. is to get them to heal. And so the PTSD, you, you mentioned, you didn't say PTSD, but when you say, I can't even imagine if you're a, a firefighter and you wake up to an alarm mm -hmm. to wake you up, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, is that a fire alarm in their heads? Maybe mm -hmm. is that a fire alarm. And it, I didn't, I never thought of that until you said that. Is that like a trigger? Yeah, totally. I mean, um, 
like there doesn't even have to be an alarm they're just like they're wired like so like their nervous system so amped up like 24 7 almost like where because there's certain nights where the guys will tell me you know like we slept two hours or i slept six hours in four days because they just went to call after call after call so then they go home maybe for a day two days and they their body's like oh you need to be awake right now and then they wake up and have to calm themselves back down so they're not getting any good sleep and from that book why we sleep it all talk it talks about how we process trauma specifically when we get our full rest right mm -hmm. so them not being able to get that there's a lot of things that they're not able to deal with let alone are they properly down regulating that nervous system getting that inflammation out of their brain their body so that they are like recovering from like their shifts and just everything they're dealing with and I would imagine that would end up being all kind, you know, all kinds of benefits. Like they're more alert when they're driving at high speeds, mm -hmm. when they get to the place and have to make snap de decisions. Yeah. Also carrying things. I would imagine their mobility is better because they're not as stiff and painful mm -hmm. and inflamed, like you just said. Absolutely. Absolutely. Their mobility is a lot better um, considering they're so, like they're carrying 70 pounds worth of gear. Mm -hmm. And that's not including the person that they're dragging out. You know, and patients can be children to like very large adults. And, you know, like when you're not even sleeping enough, like that's a heavy weight to like carry. Um, so it's, it's definitely incredible to be able to work with them and help increase the mobility, help them work through injuries that they're not able to be even seen for because they can't make doctor's appointments because they're stuck at work for so long. Um, and they can't get approved for like the work comp or whatever it is. And just being able to be that resource for them has been such an experience, like, and a blessing for sure. I'm happy to do it. So, so you were in law enforcement before level one. So that mm -hmm. means it doesn't sound like you've ever touched people this way therapeutically. Nope. This is basically a career change for you. Absolutely. 100% a career change, but my goal with law enforcement was I wanted to help people um, and be there for them on the hardest days of their lives. And now I get to help people work through pain that they've been dealing with for almost their whole lives. So that's, that's, it's totally worth the career change in my opinion. So how has this, all of this change affected your life? Oh, it's been substantial, like the benefits. I mean, my mind is better, my spirit's better. Um, being able to have interactions with people where I get to be Paige, you know, and it's positive interactions. It's healing for the both of us. I mean, I, I was diagnosed with PTSD as well prior to going into this. Um, and as a result, <clears throat> I'm almost floating every single day. I get that FST high just from touching people. <laughs> nice. So, so it's it's mutually beneficial, and that's why I think it's made me so passionate about it. Because in a little bit of time, it's changed my entire life. Um, so I just I just try to do that, especially for the people that I know what they go through. Mm -hmm. um, I know what the shifts are like. I know what the things they see are like, and make people just longevity and like well-being and mental health like is so important and it's so important to just do anything that we can to take care of the people that risk their lives every day for us well uh it makes me happy warms my heart just to hear uh the things that you've done with others based on our training that's mm -hmm. why we do this training and it's to spread the work because my wife and i can't do it anymore just one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. we felt like we couldn't affect enough people and you guys are affecting thousands to tens of thousands we've had up to a million people experience the work at this point so that that's the vision that's the mission is to spread the work it's, really it's a gift it's really a gift that's the way i see it and it's what i tell my clients you know you guys have given us a gift that we get to give to them well uh switching gears just a tiny bit to the last course you took with us was level three that's currently our most advanced so um i heard some some stories a story or whatever of um the implementing the work uh, the mm -hmm. new work, the new ways of assessing treating can you do you have a story for us I'll yeah know. so um the ilio soas work specifically um especially with my guys that have those heavy loads on them the releasing those like stabilizers and relaxing them i mean i've got my guys getting off the table and being like like their core 
their hips, everything just feels like it's next level released and like, and relaxed. Like they feel so much better. Like I've noticed that even they're downregulated even more, which I didn't even know was possible because half the time they're falling asleep and snoring on my table, <laughs> um, but it's just incredible. And then um, certain ones, you know, they have, my firefighters have the funniest goals. They want to, they want to be able to touch their toes, something as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Right. So <clears throat> like being able to take them into like glutes 3.0, um, or like a little bit more like releasing their hamstrings specifically, uh, doing the Titanic, um, and even the longest coli work and everything that we learned with the neck, like in level three, like it's just a game changer. It's everything I didn't know I needed to make it make the experience even better. So yeah, I'm really happy to hear that. So if people want to, you know, get a session from you, mm -hmm. uh, can you just repeat your contact information? Where can they reach you? Find out about you? Sure. So my my Instagram is humorous inc, um, and then my contact information. If we're doing telephones, it's seven six zero nine six nine two two one six. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Stay around for a little chat with Chris next. Okay, of but thank you so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go on to Chris. Hi, Chris. Hello. There he goes. Uh, so Chris Corona, you just graduated also from uh, level three recently. Yeah, I was in Paige's class. Yeah, so that's right. You two were together. Mm -hmm. Partners in FSD, not in crime. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe crime too. <laughs> she would have to with it. <laughs> happens in Chandler at our school stays in Chandler at our school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not always. <laughs> anyway, Chris, uh, welcome. And uh, thanks in advance for coming over here and sharing. We'll, we'll have you back on the screen when you say something. <laughs> Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Um, so let's let's start with you. Can you just introduce your your full name if you want, and um, just uh, what do you do, and um, where are you from? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm Christopher Corona. I have a private practice in Austin, Texas, named Need Recovery. Um, I specialize in working specifically sports recovery and medical, you know, post surgery injury with um, athletes primarily um, in Austin. Yeah. Okay, great. Can you share with us your journey uh, when you first started? Maybe I'm not sure what you exactly what you did before level one. And then you um, I actually kind of just stumbled into FST. I was looking for, I just did massage and ART, which is really hard on the body when you do it six sessions a day, every day. So I was looking for continuing education that wasn't as stringent on me because I wanted to be able to treat the same amount of people, but I wanted to go home and not just be completely physically drained and cramped picking up a spoon. Um, <laughs> that happened several times. So, um, but yeah, I just stumbled into FST and went to level one, not really knowing what I was getting into. I knew nobody that had done it. I never had a session. It just looks interesting to me and the website looked interesting and everyone that I saw in the directory that I reached out to they said amazing things about it so I just kind of went in with no expectation really <laughs> and yeah it was amazing I from the get-go after level one my clients when I got back I didn't even tell them what I was doing it was just whatever issue they had I would just kind of throw in some techniques from FST and I would oh my god what is this it was amazing Great. So you did one, you did level two. Yeah, then... I did them pretty close together within the six month period. Yeah. And now level three, you, you just graduated uh, recently with Paige. So um, how has that been? It's, it's different, more advanced skills, more uh, assessment skills off the table, as well as on the table, and then some new techniques. What, what do you have to say about, about that? I left level two feeling like I could handle any case. Like I had learned so much and I was excited for level three, but I was like, what can they possibly throw at us? And then I got to level three and it's just mind blowing how much more in depth the stretches could be and how much more of a difference they could make. 
I got back and my first client that I saw coming back had a huge breakthrough on the table and he has extensive medical background and he was, you know, what is going on with my body? He's never experienced what he was feeling. His, he had, um, major trauma from 35 years ago. He hadn't dealt with that. It just kind of released on the table and he said, like, what is going on? I don't understand what's going on. No one's ever touched me here. I've never let anybody touch me here. And just kind of, you know, having to talk to a PhD from Yale in neuroscience explaining what's going on <laughs> was really interesting. Um, and he, apparently he told me a few days later, he got in the car with his partner afterwards and his partner asked how the session went, you know, expecting him to just be you know, excited and he broke down crying for an hour and has been in therapy since and he's come back. He lives in New York, so he flies in to see me and just had, you know, his QL finally released and his pelvis realigned because for 30 years he's held in that trauma that he just hasn't ever addressed. And, you know, I've worked with him for years and not been able to really progress anywhere, but level three was what he needed to feel safe enough to release that. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a story. So basically that was uncharted territory that you were able to get into in a different way. Really for both of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the capacity for going to the deepest parts of, of the person's being, uh, it sounds like you touched that. Yeah, I really think with level three, the intention changed. You know, level one and level two were more about the techniques and you kind of got a subconscious feel that, you know, your, your response to how you touch them needs to be more flowy and more receptive and open. But when you get to level three and you really change your intention, their body responds to that. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm almost speechless. It's hard to put any, any of this into words. It's, it is what it is. And it's wonderful just to actually give people freedom. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think, people after all those decades that he your client lived with this and there's lots of people like this they, they believe nothing you know it's pretty much have to resign themselves to this is the way it's going to be and i have to manage it and work around it and this is well he opened an aids clinic in new york in the 80s so he saw so wow. many horrible really hard things and I think he just internalized, you know, his own trauma and his own issues because he constantly was being bombarded by other people that he wasn't paying attention to what his own body needed. He had a lot of grief back then because, you know, I'm old enough to have been around that time too when I was a dancer and I was in the dance world. So we saw a lot of loss. I had some teachers, yeah. my teachers and my coaches pass away and it was like everybody was basically dying. And I worked in the hospital with uh, uh, patients who had uh, been diagnosed with AIDS. And it was yeah. at that time a death sentence. Yeah. So I experienced that too, working with them, you know? And so I can only imagine uh, his exposure to all of this grief. Yeah. And, you know, you try to acknowledge it, but it can be overwhelming. And then you have to, to, to some degree, and same thing in law enforcement and firefighting, you have to bury things, your feelings about things. Otherwise you feel like you can't function. Yeah. And I think when you bury it and you're holding it inside, even when it's no longer there anymore, you're still holding it. Yeah. And that's what I had to talk him through. You know, that's why your hips have always been so tight and everything else around it is, you know, compensating to adjust for that and getting worse because you're holding all of that grief and that tension all the time. And you're so ex. you know, it for 30 years that's gone on. It's not a quick fix. <laughs> And so uh, the last question about this would be, when you have something like this, in this case, uh, it's always good to have um, adjunctive people not mm -hmm. on your, you know, I would consider them part of your team where yeah. all, all of us work in our lane. We know what we can do. And then when someone needs mental health um, consultations or therapies, whatever, then that's, you know, another uh, referral. Mm -hmm complete the whole picture of healing is that kind of what you work did you were you able to yeah um so the building my practice is actually in is kind of like a co-op setup where everyone in the building we're all health professionals but we're all private practice have our own business 
And there's several therapists, there's several energy workers, there's a physical therapist upstairs, there's a Pilates studio down the hall, and we all kind of collaborate. So when he left, I actually, she was the, one of the therapists was in the hallway and I just kind of waved her over and, you know, got his okay first and then told her, you know, what he was going through. Did she know anyone in New York that she could refer to that specializes in that? And so we got him, you know, we didn't just send him off on his way to deal with the grief. There was actually a, 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 a you know, plan in place when he left. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. And that's what we need to recognize where our skills end and another has to take over. And then it's, it's a team approach, right? It's all integrated. Yeah. So, so the client really truly feels taken care of completely, their whole being. So kudos to you. That, that's, that's a wonderful story. So last thing would be, um, how has your life changed uh, since your journey started with us? Has it changed in any way? Basically, my professional and my personal life have completely changed. I used to go home really stressed out and really tired and didn't want to do anything. And my partner, you know, wants to talk about the day and wants to go to CrossFit and has social functions. And it was really exhausting and hard to engage. And, you know, when you do this every day, it starts to wear on your personal relationships. I didn't see friends at all because I was so focused on work and, you know, and then I get to FST really just expecting another addition to my business and after I experienced it myself and saw how my clients were reacting and how my body felt afterwards, it really changed everything. I work, I actually see more clients now each week than I used to. And I feel so much better than I did. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to actually also see the benefits they're getting because the work is much more meaningful than just doing massage. I actually started a service I named Flex that incorporates both massage and FST in one session to specifically address what they need. So I'm able to actually, you know, more hone in on things, but it's less effective on me physically. They're getting a better benefit. I can work on more people and I feel better. Cool. It's well, been really great. I'm so happy to hear that really. It's, it, you know, again, this is what Ann and I do. Um, we do this work so that you guys can share the work and, and, you know, spread this good work among uh, other people, but also benefit yourselves uh, from it. So if I'm in Austin at a music festival and I'm like, hmm, Chris Corona is here. I want to make an appointment. What is your contact information for me? Or maybe Paige, you know, maybe Paige and I will come together to a music festival. You know, we want to check you out or anyone listening. Where do well, they come? Don't, don't stay downtown because it basically shuts down for those. Um, <laughs> Yeah, my business name is Need Recovery. I have a website for it. My Instagram is need, like need like needing dough. Can you spell that uh, out for some people? They don't, yeah, not it's a K-N-E-A-D, recovery. Um, yeah, Instagram or Facebook or my website. Yeah, my business number is 512-348-8658. Wonderful. Well, again, thank you so much for sharing your wonderful, heartfelt um, story about your journey and your clients. Last thing would be if uh, any of our students are hesitating and wondering why they should take level three, do you have a, like a little nutshell of why they should take level three? I'll start with you and then Paige can chime in. I think the biggest takeaway for me was just the intention. The techniques were great, but before level two, I wouldn't say my intention was bad, but it wasn't as meaningful. You know, the clients have seemed to really be receptive and change from the techniques and intention of level three. Thank you. Yeah. Good page. What, what yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. The intention is a total game changer for sure. Um, you're dealing with like a lot more like almost like intimate parts of somebody and just like peeling back those layers very slowly, especially when you're working like somebody's ilio psoas. Um, and it's, it's just different. The assessments were also super educational and like seeing the functionality, like just pieced a lot of things together. Like I'm going to watch somebody's, um, hip move like a lot different in their socket, like because of those assessments, or I'm going to watch like people that have like shoulder problems. I'm able to kind of just be like, okay, we're going to do this, this, and this, um, and break it down a lot quicker. Um, but it's definitely like even the energy work that goes into level three, um, people that have come to me, let, 
like really don't even believe in that kind of work mm -hmm. like are experiencing things especially with the sternum um like my sister-in-law um i just i just had stretched her um and she's got no no history with that you know and just touching the bottom of her sternum was something emotional for her Mm -hmm. like she felt it and she was overwhelmed by it and i think that's a very powerful thing because again it's it's more intimate parts of people that we get to heal so well um I'll, with that i'm going to close um i would ask you to just to stay on a few extra mi minutes after we're done after i close this but I, again i want to thank the both of you from the bottom of my heart and i'll say that for Anne too because mm -hmm. um, she'll listen to this uh, later uh, and thank you for sharing not only to me and Anne, but just to all the students i think your your both of your stories are super inspiring and um, it's just um, it, it, it puts fuel on my fire of passion to continue evolving and and, and spreading the, this work in any way shape that we can. So thank you so much again, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Say goodbye to everybody. Bye. <laughs>